Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the VM Blog Expert Interview Series. I'm David Marshall, and today I'm joined by Joni Clippert, the CEO and co-founder of Stackhawk. Joni, welcome to the show. Uh, thank you. Great to be with you, David. Now, this is the first time we've had the pleasure of uh, having you on the show. So maybe if you wouldn't mind, just give us a quick background on yourself and, you know, how you started uh, Stackhawk. Yeah, happy to. So I've been building software for software engineers, um, largely as a product person for the last 15 years, uh, all at DevOps startups. So uh, from anything in 2010, we were essentially doing like a low code, no code platform, making it super easy to deploy technology to the cloud. Um, just before Stackhawk, I was with a company called VictorOps. And at that business, um, we started to enter this world where we were delivering software so rapidly when you're having a problem with your production systems with latency or downtime we were routing those types of alerts directly to the engineers who wrote the code instead of guys you know sitting in a network operations center because the code was changing so fast in order to fix things quickly you actually had to route those types that type of information directly to software engineers um, and that was a great run that company was acquired by splunk in 2018 which allowed me to do this and it really felt like the next mile i don't i won't call anything the last mile but that the next mile of devops was we really have to get our cybersecurity in order and instead of waiting until we're deploying applications to productions we got to be able to instrument a lot of this vulnerability testing in our software delivery pipeline because the pace at which we're delivering software is so fast in order to keep up with it, we got to test it as part of software delivery. And so that was really the ethos behind Stackhawk is let's help software engineers find and fix these types of bugs before they deploy to production. That's great. And that, since this is the first time we've uh, we've done a video together, I'd love it if you could provide you know an overview of the Stackhawk platform itself for viewers who might not be as familiar with your technology. Yeah, happy to. So Stackhawk is an API security platform, and it kind of bridges from API discovery, so what does my attack surface look like, to really efficient API testing and vulnerability remediation. So the way you can think about it is for AppSec teams, we're helping them understand their very rapidly evolving attack surface. And for software engineers, we're making it super easy to automate testing for APIs and application vulnerabilities as part of software delivery and making it super easy. Like they're a very core user of the product for them to fix those vulnerabilities within sort of the context of the tools they use so that they can get back to writing code and make sure that less vulnerable code makes it into production. Now, in the world of IT, we we love our acronyms and the oh security God. industry isn't, uh, you know, isn't a stranger to that as well. So, Things like yeah. SAS, DAS, SCA, et cetera. Where does Stackhawk fit into the picture? Yeah, I was, absolutely. So joy, coming to security landscape for the first time, not that DevOps doesn't have acronyms either, but there's a lot and it can be a little bit overwhelming. But you kind of named the big three when it comes to application security testing. So SAS, static uh, application security testing is you know, looking at code, written code, and trying to identify patterns of how code has been written that indicate that this looks like a vulnerable pattern in your code, you should probably fix this. In, in SCA land, um, what that technology is doing is also looking at static code, reading your code base, and identifying libraries or frameworks that you're using as part of building your code and comparing it to a database of known vulnerabilities to say, hey, this library or this framework has a known vulnerability in it, you should update to the most recent version of this framework. And that those are very important tools in, in your toolkit. The way that DAST works, it's dynamic application security testing. And so it's essentially mirroring how you know you're attacking a runtime application like an attacker would, and when it finds a vulnerability, um, it's really great because it's telling you this thing is discoverable. 
and we just proved it's exploitable. So while SAST and SCA are very important tools in your toolkit, what can happen is they can be very noisy because you're, it's reading your entire code base. So it doesn't know if that code is still being used in your application. It doesn't know if that code is accessible to the internet, but it's going to throw an alert and tell you that you need to fix it. And so what can happen is often you're swimming in seas of like a thousand, thousands of alerts, not really knowing how to prioritize them. And the really cool thing about DAST is if you know that it's reachable and exploitable, that's absolutely the first thing that you should go fix. So they're all important, but why I think DAST is really interesting is because it shows us the best place to spend our time, like our biggest bang for our buck, if that makes sense. It does. So, you know, in your opinion then is SAST, you know, it's a popular place for, you know, modern teams to start finding vulnerabilities, but is it a good approach or is it flawed? Mm. I, I here's why I think it, it it became so popular. To be perfectly honest, and maybe I'll say something that's a little unpopular, but a big part of the DevSecOps movement is we actually have to talk to each other. So our security team needs to get to know our engineering team. And what's what's easy about SaaS is you just turn it on, so it doesn't really require a conversation with your development team. And it starts throwing, like we just talked about, thousands of alerts. So now I'm a software engineer sitting in the tools I use to write code. And I'm just like constantly getting pinged that I have all these vulnerabilities. But I really have no context about which ones I should fix. So while it's great to be able to start getting those insights quickly, it's the fix rate isn't actually improving because it's too noisy for your software engineers. So it has a place, but I think we can do better. Um, and I think we can help SAST be a little bit, um, make it cleaner and easier for to help software engineers know what they actually need to fix. So it, it sounds like from what you're, you're describing that uh, a modern DAS solution is really the better route. But what's tricky is legacy DAS solutions haven't been great for modern teams. So how do yeah. you convince them to give Stackhawk uh, the, your solution a try. Yeah, and, and you're totally right. So legacy DAS solutions, think about, they, they, they approach software and the testing of software in sort of a web 1.0 world, right? They, they test from the outside in, you have to ship vulnerabilities to production in order to find them. Um, they try to spider your large web property to find routes to test to find vulnerabilities. But the way that we build software today is completely API driven. 80% of all internet traffic is API traffic. And when you look at the AI world, <laughs> where we are vibe coding the heck out of everything, we are just proliferating APIs. And legacy desk can't find APIs. And it has a very difficult time testing them. So modern DAST is code aware DAST. And that's what Stackhawk is. And so by having, uh, being able to introspect the code base and see where are all my repositories, where are of those repositories, which contain APIs and applications that should be under test with something like Stackhawk or my SCA and SAS tools. And what we're releasing this week is which of those things handle sensitive data, all of a sudden we can kind of rifle shot our DAS testing on the API layer, on the most important parts and most risky parts of our code base um, and be really effective with our AppSec program. So I think what's happening in the market is people are really starting to understand that they have a lot of vulnerability exposure in their APIs, but they don't actually know where they are. And so that's the place they need to start. And API discovery is a really awesome place for teams who, who might know that their legacy DAST isn't very effective, or they might feel like I instrumented fast and I can see a lot of vulnerabilities, but we're maybe not fixing them as fast as I would like. Um, I think the best place to start is run API discovery and get a really good sense of what your attack surface looks like and what your risk profile looks like. 
and then begin instrumenting tools in the most effective way. That tends to be a really good entry point for companies that kind of don't know what they don't know or know that they don't know <laughs> exactly exactly where they should be testing. And, and I that's that's a lot of the hook. Of, of getting folks transitioned over to a more modern approach. Now, the IT industry, one of the, you know, great things and one of the bad things, quite frankly, uh, about the industry, it moves quickly and it, it changes. Oh, yeah. uh, there's always something new on the horizon. Where do you see the industry headed as we, you know, continue moving forward into 2025 and beyond? And, and how do you see Stackhawk helping to shape it? Yeah, in the in the immediate term, you know, we're producing code at least twice as fast as we were, and we already were producing code pretty quickly, right? So with with AI generated code assistance, our ability to create code uh, is increasing rapidly. But what's also happening is our familiarity with the code is going down. And statistically, at least for now, we're introducing more vulnerabilities into our code using AI tooling. So sort of your, your risk profile is, is it really increasing with the adoption of these tools? Now that might be a short term problem. Um, all of them will get smarter and help us write better code. But for now, you know, all AppSec tooling is becoming more, more important than it ever has been just because of the sheer pace and then lack of, 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 um, of real knowledge of, of the code base. But some cool things I think are going to happen. So we talked about static code analysis, looking at patterns of how you write code. That is such an easy AI thing to be able to fix, right? Like, so it's a, we joke, it's like clippy. Like, it appears that you just wrote a vulnerability into your code. Would you like to fix this? Right, or it will just automatically write better code for you. So there are tools that I think we buy today that are going to become just part of your IDE or part of how you how you write code and a lot smarter. And then there are going to be vulnerabilities that are harder to find than static code analysis, for example. So when we think about AI um, code generation and DAST, what's really cool about dynamic testing or runtime testing is it can find vulnerabilities in code that you didn't write. So that kind of use of that tool, I think, is going to become more and more important in an AI world where we're moving so fast. So like you said, it's going fast. It's, it's, it's amazing to, to keep up, um, but we're pretty excited about, about what's going what's gonna to be coming in the next 6, 12, 18 months. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I can't wait. It's, it's moving so fast and, and evolving that... Uh, uh, you know, we just don't know what's, you know, what's going to be around the corner. And I think that's a, yeah. a pretty, pretty fun thing right now. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Joni, this is great. I really appreciate you taking time out to talk with me and to share this information with VM blog viewers. Before I let you go, where can people go if they want to learn more about Stackhawk, the technology and some of the things that we talked about today? Oh, yeah, please uh, come visit stackhawk.com. Um, great resources there. And we were built very developer first. So free trial, open documentation, come learn more about how you can modernize both DAST and your AppSec tooling. Great. Well, thanks again. I appreciate your time. Thank you so much, David. Great, great to meet you today. All right, you as well. Thanks.